Well, welcome back. You're watching the 700 Club. I'm holding in my hand a very special book. It's a book that every young girl should have. Teenagers should have it. College students should have it. And young single women should have it. It's called You Are a Prize to Be Won, written by none other than the lovely Wendy Griffith, who has had all kinds of experiences. And now <laughs> she's going to tell them. What are you going to tell us? What are you going to open secrets to your hope chest? Well, as you know, I was in a relationship um, the entire year of 2011, mm. and um, it ended and broke my heart, and it was the hardest thing I ever went through. And, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit told me to write about my test. He called it a test, which I thought was interesting. And hey, well, you made a big deal about this stuff, about love and everything. I mean, for those of us, a little silly. I mean, you know, you really made a big deal of it. I wanted the fairy tale. I was in my 40s. Finally, I thought my prince had come. I could almost taste it. You know, I wanted the wedding. I wanted the ring. I wanted the wedding. I wanted the honeymoon, Pat. Well, you... you you fantasize the whole cotton picking thing. I mean, it was way overblown. But a lot of us do that. But but I was in my defense. I mean, it felt very very real. Yeah. Okay. It felt very real, you know. And but it keep going. Well, well, we dated for an entire year, and during uh, you know about six months into the relationship, you know, every girl wants to hear those three words: "I love you." Yeah. And um, one night he finally said them, but he said, I love you, but, 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 but I don't know if you're the one. And it was like getting kissed and slapped really hard at the same time because you're, you wanted to hear those words so desperately. And I'm like, why don't I feel good? But this should I don't feel know good. if you're the one. Yeah. I what don't, a jerk. Well, you know, what is that at the time? I was so confused because I thought I'd been waiting so long to hear that. Maybe he just needs more time. However, retrospect, uh, you can see very clearly, basically when a guy says, but, I don't know if you're the one, he's saying, I like you a lot, but I'm keeping my options open in yeah. case something better comes along. You yeah. know, and Pat, if I just had to... Let's be <laughs> friends and let's just cuddle. I got the picture, okay? <laughs> Listen, if I could just do that moment over in that restaurant and say, look, you can take your I love you butt and your butt and go back to where you came from because I am worth sure, you're drinking I food. love you, period. And every woman... In what I talk about in the book, every woman is worth, I love you, period. If a guy can't stay, say it straight, if he's leaving a loophole, then God's got a better plan and a better man. You're a prize to be won. And you needed some reassurance, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. I didn't. I thought I had preached to other women, you're a prize to be won, because that was something the Holy Spirit spoke to me years ago when I was... Um, I was on assignment in Florida, big national story that we'd all remember. And I asked a guy to go out to dinner with me because we'd been hanging out and yeah. laughing all day. And he said, no, I think I got to go to the gym. And I just was like, it just hurt. And I'm on my way back to the hotel and I'm like, God, why did I do that? Why did I ask that guy out? And the Holy Spirit just said, you are a prize to be won. And so I was preaching that to other women because that was something God, I said, yeah. yeah, that's right. I'm a prize to be won. But you know what? It was up here, but it wasn't here. And uh, that takes a while. That's a process to learn our value. And when you know your value, it's a game changer. It changes everything. Well, I am a testimony that you are a prize, and we are delighted that you're sitting where you are. And we hope you're enjoying it. Well, I am. And I wrote a chapter, Pat, um, an interesting chapter that's getting a lot of attention, yes. <laughs> called The Dangers of Recreational Kissing. What and is that? Is that like recreational sex? No. Just it's kissing. Just kissing. But, you know, kissing is so powerful. And people, you know, it's very countercultural to, to talk about this because everybody's like, oh, yeah, kissing's fine. But, and, and, and we all love kissing. Who doesn't love kissing? But I make the case, Pat, that you can fall in love with the wrong guy based on the fact that he's a great kisser. Kissing's like a drug. Wow. It's like a drug. It, it'll, you, you get these... Um, you know, feel good chemicals in the brain. They just you keep do. you going back for more. Yeah. And so I just make the case that, um, you know, wait as long as you can to have that first kiss because kissing is very powerful. And um, but it's a fun chapter, though. It's a fun chapter. My goodness. Well, I, is there anything here more intimate well, or is that it? Well, one thing that was, you know, the Lord spoke to me, it, you, you know, we're Christians, yeah. both in our 40s, um, trying to live God's way, not having sex. We're, you know, kissing and i i was feeling vulnerable I, the holy spirit said wendy you're feeling vulnerable because you're giving yourself away and i'm mm. like god i'm not 
we're not having sex, we're just kissing. But that's what the Holy Spirit was saying. And he said to me, too, something very interesting during the relationship. He said, purity is sexy. And I'm like, wow, what a concept. I mean, think about it. People that go on their honeymoons, Pat, mm. they got to have all these extracurricular activities. They got to yeah. go, you know, scuba and snorkeling yeah. and sailing and all these fun things. And look, I've, I've snorkeled and sailed and scuba all over the world. But that's not what my honeymoon is going to be about. Do you get my drift? <laughs> I, I, my mind just takes me to another world. <laughs> you know, and it's sad because... Gauzy, gauzy curtains and, and you know, candlelight and champagne. But think, what could be sexier than on your wedding night saying, baby, I waited for you. That's sexy. You know, it's not sexy to give it all away. Okay. And so I encourage women to, you know, save what you can. Save it and... Um, and even even a kiss can be too much if it's in the wrong if it's with the wrong guy or in the wrong spirit. Wow, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, you need to read this book. Wow, how marvelous! Well, you, you are tremendous, huh? You remember how upset I was, you know, because you you do. talked to me, and here's a guy, people that you know, Pat Robertson. He sat down with presidents and kings and queens, and, and he wanted to hear about my heartbreak. And I yeah. write about the advice that Pat gave me in the prelude, and, and it was really life-changing, and it meant so much to me, Pat. And, and now I'm able to share that advice that you gave me, which basically was, Wendy, don't throw yourself away. That's it. Don't settle. And what I like to say to women that are going through heartbreak is, Honey, I wish I had a pill to give you because there is nothing more painful than heartbreak. But heartbreak, Pat, takes its time. Uh, God had told me right away, mourn and move on. And I went to Belize. I thought I could go on vacation and get a tan and throw a rock in the ocean and come back totally healed. But that didn't happen. And heartbreak takes its time. But run to Jesus. He understands heartbreak. He's been through it. He understands rejection. Run to him. And um, he... He will help well, you get through it. I thought you were extremely beautiful and very talented, and uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, come out of this relationship and throw yourself at something, some loser somewhere. And uh, it's in the book. Whew. Where do you get this thing? Well, you can. You know what? If you order it on CBN.com, we will. Um, I will autograph it for you. I'll be happy Ooh, to autograph it. Wow. So you can go to CBN.com today, or uh, Amazon, and uh, wherever books are sold. Well, we've got a web exclusive with the interview about her book. So just go to CBN.com, click in the green room. Wendy, this is fantastic. You opened your heart, and sometimes when you open your heart, you can bring others in and they'll share. Okay. Thanks. You're terrific. I love Thanks you. Thanks so much. Love you. <laughs> well, now it's time to bring it on. We're going to get right back to it. I'm going to get my co-hosting hat back okay. on. Can this I do that? Oh, we, we, we have a romance <laughs> hat. Now let's get out of serious business. All right, go ahead. I did dedicate my book to my future husband, by the way, though. Oh, baby. So, All honey, right. if you're watching. Well, I wish you the best. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, well, here you're on, on international television, and the, the, the offers will be coming in over the phone, over the transom. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, Pat. Jan says, I have recently discovered that my past Pastor and his wife watch a show on cable that contains nudity. Even secular critics have called it pornographic. I've been unable to return to their Bible studies since hearing this. Am I overreacting? 